In this episode, we're talking to my friend Nell from Australia. Her Instagram and Facebook is Photos by Nell, and she is amazing. She has been in business for over 20 years. She has some great marketing tips. So if you are in need of some marketing tips from over the pond, I guess we call it (laughs) over the ocean, this is the podcast for you to listen to. We had so much fun. We talked kids, business, everything, motherhood, um, lots of marketing techniques that they use in Australia that we do not hear. So highly recommend you listen to this podcast. Welcome to the Photography Business Mastery for Moms podcast. This podcast is designed specifically for moms who are passionate about photography and entrepreneurship. If you are a mom with a photography business, striving to achieve balance between growing your business and spending quality time with your family, you're in the right place. In each episode, we delve into the strategies, tips, and insights tailored to help you thrive in both your professional and personal life. From marketing techniques to time management hacks, we provide tangible information to help you scale your photography business while prioritizing your family. Join us as we explore how to navigate the unique challenges and joys of being a mompreneur in the photography industry. Let's empower each other to achieve success and fulfillment in both our businesses and families. But I'm so glad that we met through the mentorship that we do because we really got to like connect. Oh my gosh. What was that two years ago when we met or something? And like, we really got to talk about like what's going on here in America and what's going on in Australia. And I feel like things that happen in Australia first, then hit the Americas. So, which is really bizarre. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Like everyone thinks it's the other way. Like they think Australia is like set your clocks back four years. Like, (laughs) No. Well, I heard. So tell me first, let's go over, since this is a podcast about motherhood and running a business and you're a mom, give us a little brief synopsis about your business, how many kids you have. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Okay. So um, running business. So I'm in my 22nd year this year um, of running the business, which is really exciting um, that I haven't crumbled like I mean to say there has been touch and go times um but I suppose that is the good thing about having your own business and kids like you can just hit the forward button do the kids come back to it so yeah it is really good um so I've got three kids so I've got a 13 a 10 and she'll be seven in August so it's crazy because one is one two is six and three is a circus and a donkey like (laughs) (laughs) This is why I love you. You are hysterical. Oh my gosh. (laughs) Well, the last Uh, time we talked, I wasn't pregnant. I had my third and he is seven months and it is chaos. It is absolute chaos. I told you the third, it's it's a circus plus a donkey. Like it is just insane. (laughs) Seriously. It's like so much love, but then it's. It, I mean, your business is another baby as well. So this yeah. is all of our first babies. So like, we want to like still tend to our first baby, but then we have three other babies. <laughs> yep. Yep. And, and they want snacks all the time. Like I literally send a message to my client. They're like, Hey, just chasing this up. And I'm like, Oh my God, I was in the middle of that. And someone needed a snack. I'm sorry. I will do that right now before anyone asks me for anything. <laughs> Seriously. Yes. So here in America, the inflation is just insane. Yes. And they say now, like, instead of snacks, it's fruit. Or what is it? It's instead of, there was an analogy I saw. It was like, instead of bottle service, now you're snack bitch or something. Yeah. <laughs> you're just oh, yeah. I'm the snack, snack bitch in this house. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. 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 It's crazy. Um, So tell me a little bit about, I know that we talked about per we talk privately about like pricing and how there's different pricing structures and luxury clients and like your everyday clients that want to come back all the time. Tell me a little bit about how you kind of structure your business. doesn't have to be specifically pricing wise, but how you work with the boudoir differently than you do families or newborns. Tell me a little bit about everything. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> so with with my boudoir, boudoir is definitely a luxury. It is it is a want. It is definitely not a need. Mm-hmm. 
technically um but i do believe a lot of women need the boudoir in their life because literally i have these broken souls come into the studio mm. and they don't like their boobs they don't like their belly they don't like their legs you know they don't like their their smile or like all these things and i'm like my biggest thing is like when you do your before photo i'm like would you smile and they're like oh no 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 i've got a really i've got really bad teeth and so i'm like screw me like <laughs> i'm like i've been staring at you for 20 minutes and i deep like yeah. um and it's like you know that breaking through so I guess it is it, it's not a need but I think it is a need at the same time like it is definitely mm -hmm. you know and these women walk out of here like they go to put their clothes back on because they've been in their lingerie or nothing and they're like I feel really overdressed <laughs> like, right <laughs> right yeah you know and they um they're like I could just walk out there naked like you know they just love themselves so it is it's like therapy um it's so good but those guys are definitely more, they're more luxury. So they're, they're higher priced, but at the same time, they are a lot more. Like, so a boudoir session can take up to four hours. Like wow. there's a lot of time spent with them. Well, they get hair and makeup done and then, you know, you got to yeah. get in and out of lingerie. And um, do you guys have Honey Bidette there? The honey lingerie Bidette? brand Honey Bidette? I, so I'm not into like lingerie and stuff, so we may, but I don't know. <laughs> okay. So their stuff, I'm literally like, where's that bag of stuff? Well, I don't know where it is now, but like their lingerie sets are like strappy and like, you know, you, you're like going, okay, it's a jigsaw puzzle. Where am I at with this? You know, oh, that strap goes there and I've got to do you up there. So it does take a little bit. It's, um, it is, you know, quite laborious. <laughs> Uh -huh. getting people into these outfits um so yeah um so those guys I do session fee and then they choose their package after they see their photos some do prepay like I mean to say five years ago I was prepaying everybody you know pre crazy world or it's more than five years ago now we're four years past crazy world mm -hmm. um you know they were prepaying they were paying up to three thousand dollars before they came and then they were going to spend another three again after they saw their photos yeah we're not there anymore mm. um like I have reduced and I guess it's also me wanting more women to experience it so my session fee is quite low it um literally covers the cost of the hair and makeup artist and um my electricity insurance like <laughs> yeah it's it's just covering prices costs sorry um and then the, like you know I've got an entry-level pack so they can get like five images mm -hmm. so they've got something and then we go up from there there is still that high luxury like my top package is still four grand and yeah. people are happy to spend it mm -hmm. but we grow to it like people don't just go oh here's my credit card whatever right. anymore like we are past that here yeah um and then like with my headshots and stuff um I hate to say it but I am becoming a little bit come in spinner with my headshots totally not meaning to be um because my session fee for my headshots is 99 dollars, and you get um three images mm -hmm. but by the time we finish and i am one of these people because for me to get my arts in the studio and do my own headshots is mm -hmm. an effort so yeah. it's an effort for everyone you know like absolutely to get here and to do it so i'm like right so we'll do some talking on your phone we'll do some with some like you know real estate agents we'll do keys we'll do this we'll do that um, we'll do your sitting, we'll do your standing. We'll like, you know, I've got the bed in here. I've got like lots of different options in here. So yeah. we do all this stuff. And then a lot of those 99 clients go up to the 399 because they're like, oh my God, there's just so many to choose from. Right. So, but I still do get my, you know, my three shots, 99 bucks. And mm -hmm. I like to keep that there because it, it's nice and easy. And those basic headshots don't take a lot of time. Yeah. It's like, a great you know. entry price too. So even if they yeah. are just doing the $99, like you said, it's getting them in the door. And then instead of just headshots, maybe they need family pictures. Maybe they need boudoir pictures. So they're coming back for more stuff too. Like there's, yeah. um, it's here in America, there's the, um, a teacher. I don't remember her name, but like, it's like a $10,000 headshot where like they're selling multiple images, which is great. But like, that's amazing. Sense, which is great, but it then it's like I don't want to find that one person a year to do a headshot for ten thousand dollars. I would rather have a yeah. hundred people come in 
obviously well, not a thousand dollars each, but like, I would rather have more people come in so that I can service them with just a headshot. And then they say, Oh, you do other stuff too. That's great. That's perfect. I can always come back for more, you know, exactly. like, I feel like, and especially here in America too, like we're getting past that. Like there are still luxury brands out there. Don't get me wrong. And they do beautiful work. But I think we're starting to get to that point where it's like, okay, these luxury brands are starting to struggle and they're doing like model calls and they're just doing like sales and stuff. I don't remember the last time I did a sale. I just did um, mini sessions on the beach for the first time and those sold out in like a second. But like mini sessions, I mean, I could go on a rant here. Mini sessions are different than... (laughs) Mm. <laughs> and some other sessions too <laughs> i actually um have completely steered away from mini sessions really um, because we are they have been so misconstrued like mm. we now have we get inquiries i just want a newborn mini and yes. i'm like there is no such thing yeah like, mm-hmm. i agree is, yeah in my opinion a mini is in wham bam thank you ma'am you absolutely got. Minimum, 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 minimum time, minimum captures, minimum mm-hmm. edits. It's all minimum. And yes, I do have my mini clients who end up spending more than my full portrait clients, which blows my mind. But at the same time, I do have those ones. And it's like, I don't know if you've seen all those reels, like, you know, high paying clients send the photos. Yep, love them, invoice paid, low yep. paying client. Oh, could you just change this, 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 you know, and I'll pay the invoice in increments over the next six years. Like um, I totally totally understand. Now, I will say one thing is I use mini sessions for marketing. So like some of them will be free, but they're five minutes, and five minutes is a mini, like it's in and out. So like the mini pricing is a mini. So it's five minutes. Um, Our Santa sessions, our Easter bunny minis are just like that. Now those are paid, but some of my mini sessions I do for free, like spring, cute little backdrop, come in for a free picture. They buy more. They always buy more. Yeah. Even if I'm doing it for three, two hours, I'm still making a couple thousand dollars because they're going to see like 10 pictures and they're going to want more pictures. So so That's I don't awesome. know. I don't know if you saw my model call recently. No, I didn't. I'm, no. Oh, so I'm doing a mild, wild. I mean, say I chose the worst time to do it because my life went sideways. My son had knee surgery, and like it's dragged out. And I'm like, oh my god, I really need to like finish this. What I started, thirty-seven, thirty-seven, thirty-eight applications. Wow. And literally everyone was a model call winner. Like you mm-hmm. know, everyone came. In the model call it cost me hair and makeup Mm -hmm. but most of them but I make them pay $200 so I say to them you know I'm putting $350 in the game I need you to you know meet me right and that's a credit towards your extra photos yeah absolutely yeah and most of them are spending like that's good and they know the pricing ahead of time so they know the packages and stuff like that right yeah See? Yeah, but they're like, I got a free shoot, so I'll spend more money. Like, you know, I got right. 350 shoots, right. so I'll spend an extra thousand. And you're like. <laughs> <laughs> well, so here's the thing in America. Um, there's, a, you know what? Our mentor, I think, also kind of talked about this with the bait and switch option where it was yes. like a $500 free session. And then it was like, okay, it's a model call. Be here this date and time and whatever. And if you like anything, you can buy anything. But then they yeah. don't tell them the pricing ahead of time. Like no, that is I such that a switch. switch. Oh, yeah. I hate it. It's and so- see that to me. So we have um, we call them shopping centers. You guys call them malls. Yes. Um, like mall photographers here, and one is called Gotcha. And like they when they like, literally got gotcha. you. Does that not <laughs> sound scammy? Like they get you, baby. So I have had so many clients ring me, and they're like. How much would you charge for two prints and six digitals? And I'm like, oh, what size prints and stuff like that? And it usually comes in around 300 yeah. to 600, depending. Yeah. And they're like, um, gotcha, just, I just paid $1,500 <gasps> because they had a free photo 
mm. in the mall, like, and it's a mini, like it is equivalent yeah. to a mini. And like you've been yeah. shot in the shopping center. There's no luxury. There's no one percenters. Right. There is nothing. Right. But they're like, get them in. They ca- they, they do capture some pretty freaking cute photos. Like they yeah. do have nice sets mm. and they have it down to an absolute science of how to pose these kids. But yeah. I mean, so it is a, teenager with a camera that's told this is your light setting this is where it goes this is your aperture this is your shutter speed yeah oh wait you go there's right. no you know you're not actually you don't have a professional <laughs> right so we used you to know. have um a lot of mall photographers there was like picture people and then jc penny sears um so they were really popular but they went out because of um crazy world happen. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to say the world. Like I don't that, we say don't word, say that word anymore. Either. I know. I don't know if it'll be banned or if it'll have like in America, we have like this little tagline at the bottom. Um, so they, not all of them, but most of them went out. So they're definitely like the bait and switch as well, but they're not as pricey as that. I, I should say there's one that's like this fairy garden, fairy wings. Oh my God. We have one of those too, that they do all the imposing and it's really bad. Like it's like they've almost held their thumb down on um, the iPhone. You know how it automatically cuts you out and stuck you. (laughs) Yes. So that one is definitely a bait and switch as well, because I saw ads going around here in America and I was like, I could have swore I saw that on like one of our like group pages talking about how it's bait and switch. And someone, one of my clients went to them and was like, I just spent $1,500 on three eight by tens or something ridiculous. It was absolutely ridiculous. And it's terrible because now the only thing that people get out of those types of experiences is bad juju. And they don't want to ever go back to something like that ever again. Like it it really sours the industry. Like it's mm-hmm. it's also like your ones like we've got a girl who is twenty five dollars for an hour session oh. and all your photos and I'm like, honey, like no, I know, I know. Well, all you need is someone to trip over on one of your photos, like at one of your right. shoots, and hurt themselves. Yeah, mm-hmm. that twenty five dollars is not going to cover your public liability. Like. Right, right. <laughs> It makes you know? sense. And it, it's like, I understand where people start at, but once they yeah. need to, they need to learn that running a business, you need to at least charge enough for your insurance for yes. certain props and stuff. I mean, I here I, in America, a lot of people start for free and it's totally fine and I get it. But then it's like, if you've been doing it for so long, you need to have insurance. It, and it, And it's very hard to go from, charging nothing mm-hmm. to charging an income and and, yes. and a a livable income like right. it is so hard and right. they don't make their lives any easier from going from hey I'm just starting out what I think to any anyone who's starting out in the industry I think you need to go okay I'm going to give myself 10 sh- 10 sessions yeah. I'm going to do 10 sessions for peanuts for mm-hmm. for cost for learning mm-hmm after that 10 sessions, you need to then go, I am now doing this. Like I am charging and you need to charge. Okay. Don't charge industry rate, but charge only a tiny bit under, like maybe $50 under or a hundred dollars under, but you right. need to charge industry rate because it's so much easier to go up a hundred dollars than it is to quadruple your price right. to be able to eat this week. You know, think, like uh, another thing is um, education. I think everybody oh. needs to do a business course. I think everybody needs to do, if they're doing newborns, they should have either, I, I personally think in-person course, but I know here in America, some people are a little iffy with in-person stuff, which is crazy to me. But um, yeah. having that hands-on experience with another business mentor, a photographer who can teach you angles and especially like cameras and lenses and things like that, like having somebody to talk to as a mentor and to yeah. bounce ideas off of is going to really increase somebody's business exponentially very quickly as well. I mean, I started yeah. in 2013 and I wasn't like for real until like end of 2015 probably. And that's because yeah. I didn't want to pay for education. <laughs> 
And then yeah. once I did pay for multiple different types of education resources, yes. and it's a college degree with some of these people, um, it, my business really exploded. And you're only going to yes. get bigger and better and do more if you spend money to make money. Yes. Oh, 100%. So um, just recently I had a phone call from this guy and I was like, oh, he's going to try and tell me. I don't know if you guys get lots of cold calling over them. Like, yes. you know, oh, we can move your Google ad. We can move yes. your here. Let's do your insurance. Like all this kind of shit. So we were on our way in January. Um, we were heading away for um, a little family holiday. And I got this phone call and I was in bad reception and I'm like, oh, my God, this guy is going to try and tell me, sell me better Google um listing or you know something like that yeah and I said look mate I'm really sorry I'm in bad and I was I was in bad reception I wasn't being totally rude but I was like mate I'm in bad reception just email me some information you've obviously found my listing just email me some information and we'll go from there yeah anyway we're driving along and I get a ding that I got an email because we must have gone through some reception and I opened it up and I went to my husband blow me down with the feather he's an actual client <laughs> <laughs> So I was like, oh, my God, I really need to, um, You it, it, because you get so much of it, you get to the point where you're like, this person's wasting my time. Yeah, mm -hmm, yeah, sure, no, no, thank you, bye, and you cut people off. That is great that you say that because I tell all of my students, answer the phone, no matter who it yes. is. We get something answer up here that phone. says scam lightly or likely, and um, I actually get clients that say scam likely because they don't make phone calls. They always text or email. Uh, so yes. then the phone number will say possible scam because a lot of phone calls are coming out of that number. And yes. I've booked clients right over the phone because I answer the phone. I swear I answer the phone for every single little thing. And if it's like that, we you we have like a you can block the number after that. So I just do yeah. that. But um yeah, always answer the phone. You never Definitely. know what it's going to be. Make it till you make it. Like, oh, yes. you know. I love that. I always said that when I started my business, I was like, fake it till you make it. I sold so much wall art because I was like, okay, so people do the digital gallery. Then they included with the album, what size wall piece do you want? And it was yes. great. Like I would sell really big wall pieces, but then it got to the point that here in America, the cost for the wall pieces are astronomical. Uh, they are so bad. So like, they increased in 2020 20%, and now they're 80% above that. So, like, me oh. trying to sell a, something that costs me, like, $100, technically, industry here, you should be selling it for, like, $1,000. But people are not spending that type of yeah. money on a wall piece anymore. They're just not. Yeah. Do you have what's called small woods out by you? No. No. So, small woods is, like... um cheaply made do you have like um cg pro prints no you have b pro don't you're a b photo so b pro b pro we have um b they're pro. a professional lab yeah yeah they're amazing so they're probably the same uh, as like our millers over here where you can do like um canvas and frames and albums like all of that stuff yeah. right yeah they're like a one-stop shop they do like okay. um can i flip my camera around yeah, okay. So they do like all that stuff, like oh, canvases look that. and look circles you. and oh, all that, that kind of stuff. So good. So like we have that, but small woods is like the consumer version of that stuff. So like something oh, that would cost. Oh, okay. Okay. So snap something fish. that would cost us maybe like $25 and we would sell for a hundred dollars, just say. They're selling yeah. it for like $14. Ah. So it's like, but the quality is not there. The quality is not there, but I, there's, it's so hard to compete with that because right now a big thing is like the barn wood, like rustic white barn house feel right now here in America. Ah. And they're like, so for that. So it's so hard to compete with that. So like, I still ask, I still ask what size wall piece do you want? Are we looking at wall pieces? Like I just did a zoom before this and they want to do a wall piece, but it's like, by the time I tell them the price, it is, it, it's, it, it's astronomical. It's yeah. Astronomical. And it's really hard to say it with, con with like, with confidence of like, oh, that's just a further $3,000. Like with, you know, like you've just got that in your back pocket. Yeah. Right. It's so hard, yeah. but it's so much easier to sell 
like I feel like a package where it has digitals and a wall piece. So that's something yeah. I'm moving to this year is like letting them have the option of an album or a wall piece, depending on the size of the wall piece, you know, um, yeah. and clients have been liking that too. So maybe that's yeah. like a new option instead of like where our business mentor is like sell everything a la carte. I'm finding packages are working the best for me right now because yeah, all included. And it it is like a lot in one price and it doesn't yes. feel like it's so salesy to the client. Yeah. And like I do a lot, um, like I have definitely taken his advice and I do have the a la carte. So I do do a little bit of like you get this, this and this, but you also get this credit. Mm. And then, so if they do want to add a little bit more, it's not so much more. It's yeah. So I kind of do a bit of best of both worlds. That's a great idea. I haven't done the credit in years. I think I took that away right before the, maybe it was right in the middle of the pandemic because everybody was like not buying at all at that point <laughs> for, yeah. all for newborns and, and maternity, but maybe that's something yeah. that would bring up more wall piece sales. So that is a great Great suggestion. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> like I, and, and, but I don't know about you, but like, I've been doing this a while. So a lot of stuff that I used to do is now new again. Like, you know, and right. people are like, oh, I've started doing this. And I'm like, oh, we did that early 2000s. <laughs> <laughs> right. Isn't it so, but it's, know. Like, it's like clothing trends. It's like, I don't know if you guys had like the Steve Madden shoes where it was like the black flop on the top, like that was like the 80s, early 90s. They were so popular and now they're back. They're back. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So they were they were Colorado had them um over here. Like the brand was Colorado. And I was in the shops the other day. I'm like, oh my God, they've made a come what? What is going on right now? Like Somebody did clueless said, like, become this popular is again? our moms kept all of our clothes because the trends keep coming back. Oh my gosh, that is so funny. Oh my yeah, gosh. Everything old is new again. <laughs> right? What does a typical day or week look for you with having your three kids and also running a very busy studio? Ah, chaos. <laughs> so I have um, in my house, I have, which is on the other side of this wall, um, I have a massive um, calendar. Like it's like a... 30 by 40 perspex calendar. The company's called Daily Orders and it's called the Command Center. Um, it's, it's essential to my life. Um, so it has everything. So everyone has a different color. So all my kids, like my son is blue, my middle child is orange and my youngest is green because they are their favorite colors. So they are their colors. So yeah. our house is very color coordinated. So your towel is your color, your thing on your... Um, your in activities on the calendar are in your color. Like everything is in your color um, that's because great. that's the way my brain yeah, can keep yeah. track of shit. <laughs> Absolutely. That's a great and idea. It works really I well think the would thing. definitely love that too. So that's a great idea. Yeah. The towel thing works really well because you walk in the bathroom, in the lounge room, you're like, hmm. you're not saying whose towel. You're like, Ivy Grace, that's your towel. That's your color. Like, <laughs> that's such a great idea. I never thought of that. Yeah, so everything's color coordinated. So we start the day. So I usually get up around six six thirty, depending, uh, depending how late I worked at night. I guess. Um, True. So we do lunches. Kids have brekkie. Get ready. Um, get them all packed. Off they go on the school bus. Um, so then I pretty well hit work mode from about eight thirty. So I I stop and have breakfast. Like this is something new because I wasn't eating. I was. So terrible. Um, so now I'm like, right, kids are on the bus. I go make my iced tea and sit down and have my breakfast. Um, so that's become, you got to do that. That's so good. Then, I'm the same way. I'm not a breakfast person, but I'm forcing myself to even have like leftovers from the night before. So yeah, that's a good yeah. thing. Just something, just yeah. something to keep me going. Because I was getting at three o'clock, like picking the kids up from school. And I was like, Ooh. Why is my brain hurting? Why is my body hurting? I'm like, oh, because I haven't yeah. eaten, you know. Yeah. And then yeah. I was like getting Maccas or KFC or something terrible mm-hmm. through a drive through. Like mm-hmm. it just wasn't good. Mm-hmm. So, um, so yeah, so I hit the ground running 8 30 till about two o'clock. Um, and then I pack for kids' afternoon sports. So my girls dance three days a week. 
um, before my son had his knee surgery, he was playing soccer um, and they did cycling and they're going to go back into swimming. So they do like quite a lot of activities. So my day sort of ends at two o'clock for work. Unless I have both children in dance, I will then sometimes scoot and do like a quick content shoot or, you know, fit something in um, yeah. while they're at dancing. And I've got a really good dance teacher. I'm like, I am coming back for my child. She's like, no, no, they're fine. Just let them stay. I'm like, I'm just going <laughs> to shoot. She's, she's super breezy. Um, so it is good. Like I can just duck back a bit, like go grab them. Um, and then we obviously come home, do the dinner routine, all that kind of stuff. And then I will sit down and do a little bit of editing, a little bit of emails, but I'm actually getting really good at businesses work nine to five. So yes. people can be contacted. Like I try to contact them between nine and five. If someone rings me at seven o'clock at night, I'm not rushing for the phone. Cause I'm like, no one else is answering the phone at this right. time. Like, You're so you know, right. I will yeah. ring them back in the morning or you get these random texts like, um, Last yesterday, I got a a message going. My photos aren't loading, and I'm like, "Oh, okay." I, and then I messaged them in the morning. I'm like, "Oh, what gallery is it for?" Oh, it's from our formal from 2020. Mm-hmm. I'm like, there'd be a reason that's not loading. I don't know. Yep. <laughs> you know, you're only four years late. Like- right. Oh my gosh. But that's good that you have that work like balance too. I struggled with that for many, many years until oh, I set that me wrong. specific I was schedule. Terrible. Yeah. yeah, I was and terrible. And then I was like anxious because I'm getting emails, and then I'm anxious because I'm on my phone when the kids are in front of me. It yes. just was like you need to, as much as there's not like a quote unquote balance, but you need to set those boundaries. That's the word I'm looking it's for. Boundaries and like so, for instance, like um going and doing a shoot and people not being ready and they're like well you can just come back and you're like well actually no I can't like right Mm -hmm. whereas before I was like oh okay I'll come back it and like you know I'd squeeze it in I'd be running around everywhere and I'm like you know what no we don't do that like yeah yeah I've been really good at setting very specific expectations like on multiple emails text messages phone calls whatever that client is going through because If you don't put it in writing or tell them specifically, they'll take their good old time. And with newborns, I kind of get it. It's like, okay, you might be late. It's totally fine. But you're not going to be an hour late and then expect your session to be an hour later and like technically starting. That doesn't work that way. So I put in there, if you are up 20 minutes or more late, that will run into your session which I walk off three hours. I typically don't take three hours, of course, but it's just in case, you know, you get that one baby that's just like so fussy. Yeah. But so my standard sessions, um, I have people say to me, oh, we're running late. I'm like, that's fine. As long as you get here within your 15 minute session, no worries. Yeah. If you're outside of that 15 minute session, I'm sorry, I'm fully booked and you're not taking my lunch. Like, right. believe it or not, Santa actually made me be really strict with my time and really strict yeah. with everything because I had another human that I had to, you know, he needed a break. Like, yeah, I don't no, expect so him true. to work through lunch. Like, yeah. yeah. So I do five minute Santas and I do 15 minute Santas. And I had a client this year who was a 15 minute Santa that called me at the time she was supposed to be there. And she was like, Oh, well, you know, my one son's sick anyway, so we wouldn't have been able to come. And I'm like, okay, you are paying for Santa's time for the next time you come in. Cause I still have to pay him. Yes. (laughs) If you told me 24 hours before your kid is throwing up, then I might be a little bit more lenient. Right. But you're not going to call me. Even 12 or six hours before. Yeah. It's, it's. Insane. But yeah, yeah, Santa definitely made it really, really big for me to like, li- I have so many instructions for Santa. I will have to post it. It's insane. And some people are like, this is a little much, but I'm like, but you don't get it. <laughs> like, yeah, people will uh-huh, not, no. not read it, which is fine, but at least it's there. So when they complain like, oh, we were only definitely- five minutes late. Right. Yeah. It's in your contract. It's in the writing. Um, yeah. I'm like, there's the people out there that complain about it. And that's why you have to have it written down. You have to literally spell things out for people. (laughs) 
I think I think that was my biggest learning curve in business mm-hmm. is cover your ass. And so many times, like, you know, um, I have I have put posts up going, well, I've learned, but how can I make this better next time? Like, you know, yeah. I don't need everyone to tell me you should have because I know I should have. Right. I, I learned that. What do you do to prevent this? Like, right. you know, yeah. hindsight's a great thing. That's, but yeah. that's so great you say that. Cover your ass. I learned that yes. in healthcare when I worked in healthcare years ago. And yeah. document, document, document. Even if yes. the, the patient, we would say the patient would uh, refuse doing their exam or whatever. And then they would yeah. go back up to the nurse and be like, I didn't refuse my exam. Um, Yes, you did. <laughs> yeah, here it so is. I'm yeah. documenting yeah. everything for you now. <laughs> yes, yes. And, you know, I've even got to the point now where I ring someone, they don't answer. I email them and say, as per our email, and I use my client management system to do it. So then I can go, look, you opened your email. Like, <laughs> Yes. I love HoneyBook for this. What do you use for your client management? I use Studio Ninja. Okay. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, I don't which think is that's an Australian popular one. here in America. I know it can be used, but definitely like HoneyBook, Dubsado. Um... Oh, there is so many now. Oh, and like goodness. when I first started, you could not find anything that was designed for photographers. Yes. Like it was terrible. Like my system's like a little bit of a hoarder with a lot of stuff. So I have got books of all my communication, yeah. like of my days. Like I used to write down like, you know, I go, oh, yeah, uh, t- 11.50, spoke to about yeah. blah, blah, blah. 11, uh, you know, 1230 had phone call from like, yeah. <laughs> like I have books of like pretty well journals of my day. Yeah. Um, no, that's great yeah. though, because you, again, you have to cover your ass. You never want to get to that yes. point, especially like if you're on the phone with a past client and like, you want to give them like a thank you discount for coming back, write it down because yes. then if you forget and you say, Oh, what did I say your discount was? And they say, instead oh, of like, $50, oh, it's 500 <laughs> Right? Oh, it's you were like, giving me all this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So, yeah, exactly. I never said that number. <laughs> I do. Like, and I remember this one day I didn't write it down because I was I was busy doing something and I didn't write it down and I mm. quoted all these things. Mm-hmm. And then I sent them an email. I'm like, I'm just sending you your invoice. I just want to confirm what I was charging. And she replied with, oh, we agreed to whatever you said on the phone. And I'm like, you don't know what I said. <laughs> so we're gonna make this up as we go here i'm like we're both making this shit up i know it's about here because that's usually what i charge and unless right. i was really broke that day it wouldn't have been much less <laughs> right oh my gosh that's so funny so in australia do you have like different markets for like different towns and different areas like we do in the united states so like California is super expensive, very luxury, very LA, just think like celebrity pricing, like very high pricing. Here in South Jersey, there are some of those clients, but it's not everyone. So like I like to market to the 60% of like the middle class people that value photography that will spend maybe six to a thousand dollars per session and come back multiple times a year, come for like a little mini session here and there as well. But I find that the luxury photographers, and it's great for them, they're marketing to these like one percenters and then they don't come back. So it's so hard. They're just constantly marketing to new clients. Do you find that you have those types of markets by you as well? Um, I try to be weird. Um, It's pretty well... (laughs) we have all the markets in all the areas all the time. Like, really? you know, um, most of it, but is that sort of middle class? Like we don't have that really high, like our capital cities. So, um, so our, so we've not got as many States as you guys. Um, <laughs> we only got seven States and territories. Um, but like, um, like Melbourne is quite eclectic and quite um, bougie and mm. known for its culture and stuff like that. Mm. But even in Melbourne, there's the high price clients and there's the low price clients. Mm. But also because Australia is the way it is, um, 
it's not like so like we have a capital city but then half an hour outside of there we've got like Ipswich which is a low demographic um so it's almost town by town pricing and okay so like your luxury sort of markets are usually in your capital cities mm-hmm. but there are still the luxury ones in other cities like I don't know if that makes any sense <laughs> no it does it does because our states I feel like it's I mean Australia is, is gigantic as well but like it's so yeah. different like there's these teachers in LA that are saying you can get five to ten thousand dollar newborn sales and then you can't teach that to somebody in Idaho where it's a rural area. You know, they only yeah. have a thousand cl- a thousand people in their town. You know, it's so different everywhere you go. But I find yes. it's it's so hard to, yes, again, there's those one percenters out there. You can get them to come back, but it's not as often as like a middle class person that actually like values yeah. photography. They love their family. And I'm not saying, I don't want to say it like one percenters don't love their family. <laughs> no, no, but they, they will go. And I mean this with as much respect as I can, because I, I do serve one percenters, um, but they t- generally go to the trending clients. So yeah. like our big families here, you like, um, my mum was a real estate agent. Well, still is a real estate agent, but she used to sell houses. Now she sells land. Mm-hmm. Um, but she used to go into people's houses and she's like, oh, that's a beautiful wedding photo. Who took it? And literally nine times out of 10, the reply would be, because she was kind of like trying to work out, like she was doing a bit of, you know, slide um, investigating for me, like, you know, yeah. who's trending and whatnot. Most of them would reply with, oh, I don't know, the best in Mackay at the time. Oh, really? So they don't even remember who they went to. No, they don't remember. They don't, they've got no connection. Wow. They're just like, oh, the best. Yeah. Yeah. So, and like, I, so I've been doing this for a flipping long time and I still have people go, oh, are you still doing that? I don't see much of you. And I'm like, huh? Like. (laughs) I'm on socials as much as I possibly, like I do try to, I get on there at least once a week. That is my, my bare minimum is once a week posting. Right. I'm getting better with stories and stuff on Instagram and shadowing that over to my Facebook. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's usually one a day if I can. Mm -hmm. Um, But, you know, like I am showing up on socials, but there are so many photographers in my town that you just is in a wash. And I did say to, um, like someone said to me one day, oh, I see these photos I got. I was like, yeah, cool. Why? Out of curiosity, why didn't you book me? And they're like, oh, I forgot you were a photographer. Uh-oh, and I'm like, this is, this is someone who I would see like, you know, weekly or, yeah. you know, biweekly, like fortnightly. Like, yeah. Um, yeah. And they were like, oh, I totally forgot that you're a photographer. And I said to my mom, I need to like print magnets to stick on people's fridges so they see my name every single day that is a great marketing idea idea. I was just gonna get into marketing (laughs) because that is one thing that has always been on my list is like giving them um I know our mentor says like a calendar with like your name like when you should book your next session but even just having like either your business or I mean you could even go as far as putting like their favorite picture on the magnet and say, see you next year or see you next October or like whatever month they were in. That is such a great marketing idea as well. And nobody does that here in America. Nobody. Oh, really? (laughs) No. Oh, there you go. Oh my gosh. I will say I learned a lot of great marketing techniques from our mentor, but, and they don't do it here in America. Here in America, the teachers say, oh yeah, market, 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 but they don't like give you step by step. And like, <laughs> that's what I want to. Yeah. Our mentor is very followers. good like that. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. So yes. that's why I'm so glad that we brought that up. That is so good. <laughs> so like, so my marketing things, oh my God, I should have like been prepared and had some shit in my studio. <laughs> um, <laughs> but something that I, um, so I've been, I bought them, I've been getting them now two, maybe three years, is your golf umbrellas, like your big golf umbrellas. Yes. Mine are hot pink and they have my business logo on them. So we live in North Queensland. So 
it rains a lot here. Like it's really exciting. The sun's actually out today. It's super exciting. <laughs> um, but in like January, February, it's usually really wet. And then like November, December, it's usually pissing down with rain as well. And then sometimes in winter it gets a bit wet too. So oh <laughs> it's like gosh. tropical. Um, <laughs> so we use umbrellas a lot. Well, you guys get snow. So I guess you use umbrellas for snow. Yeah. Yes and no. It depends on the person. I, I hear you guys just say it's yes and no. It's like 50 50. But I remember you telling me about your golf umbrellas, and that is such yes. a great idea. Yeah. And be, so they're hot pink. And so what I did is I got um, my first order, I got 10, and I was like, really like, here's an umbrella. Like, you know, like I was like, you know, you should feel really special because I only have 10 of these things. Like, right. Right. Know. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and then, so the next order I got, so I had my, my information in black on those and you couldn't really see it that well. So I'm glad mm. I only got 10. Um, cause then I ordered another, I ordered 60, I think the next time and I made everything bigger and bolder and in white. So it stood out more. Yeah. So on the first day of soccer, like the first game of soccer, you know, off I go with my little wheelie cart and, um, and loaded with umbrellas. And I gave the entire team these pink umbrellas. So literally our entire sideline was pink photos by Null Umbrellas. It was it was epic. Um, oh, my gosh, that is epic. <laughs> I could just envision that right now. That is so cool. It looks so good. And then because most of these kids have siblings, they, they all, like, petered off. So at soccer you would see these little pink umbrellas, like, popping up everywhere. And now it's become a little bit of a joke. Like I'll be somewhere and I'll see one of my umbrellas and I'll be like, how did you get my umbrella? Like, you know, because then I started giving them as like, you know, when people are like, oh, I want a donation. And they always wanted photo shoots. Mm. And I don't know, are Yeti cups big in your, in America? Are the Yetis like? Oh, the Stanleys, not Yetis. Oh, you do Stop it. You guys are Yetis down there. Yeah, we're Yetis. <laughs> so Your Stanley is that's so funny it's literally the same cup but you do yeti and we do stanley how funny is that these come in i don't have it i've actually cleaned my studio out i've taken all my cups out like um but these come in like a wine tumbler they come in like a little short glass do the stanley yes. do the same thing yeah yes. so there's like a whole range of these uh, yeah so we're yeti and so what we do is we um i've got a laser engraver so i laser engrave my logo on it stop so oh now my gosh, i that's give such a great idea yeah so now i give these out as like a cup and, a, and an umbrella as my yeah that is amazing that is so amazing and then you got more yeah oh my gosh you yes. got more <laughs> This is so good. So, like, with those things, you can, like, put stuff in them. So, like, if you want to if you want to give a photo shoot or something and hope they come in, look, honestly, I don't know about you, but I give out so – I was giving out so many gift vouchers. Yes. And never seeing the people. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, that was shit. Like, you know, that was a waste of my time printing it. So now I do put a little gift voucher in the cup or in the umbrella um, and give them out. But at least those people are carrying my information around. Yes. So they are taking it to like people, um, cause you guys are only just going into the no plastic world, aren't you? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Australia has been in the no plastic world for quite some time now. Um, so we, our takeaway containers, are like, we still do have the plastic ones for now. Like your Chinese takeaway container, we call them like a mm -hmm. plastic lid mm -hmm. square box. Um, we still have those, but like your burger containers are no longer styrofoam. They are cardboard, um, Knives and forks are all timber. They're not all bamboo. They're not plastic knives and forks and spoons oh. when you go places, like you take away stuff. Yeah. So um, we don't have plastic straws anymore. No. And everybody's plastic pissed about that in New Jersey. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, 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 you get over it. So you've only just gone into this? You've only just gone in? Yeah. Yeah. It, this, okay. year, this past year, it was really bad. We um, banned plastic bags too. So you have to have the reusable bags. Yeah, how's that going for you? Oh, people hate it. And I hate yeah, it yeah, because yeah. I forget them all the time. <laughs> yes, yes. So where now we so we had the plastic where you they couldn't give you a plastic bag. You had to buy a 10 cent bag 
but it was still a plastic bag. Right. We've moved past that now and we're now paper bags. So we hate it even more because we don't even have a plastic bag to put your wet clothes. (laughs) So, um, but because we're going, like, I can give you this. You can cut this out if you want and don't tell all your followers, but I'll give you this. (laughs) You can get little tins that have got a fork, a knife, a spoon and a straw and chopsticks, I think. Yeah, it's got chopsticks in it too. So I've got those as well and they've got photos by now on them as well. That is so and cool. then I've got, so when I give my clients their stuff, I give them, so I've got two options. I either give it in a tote bag so mm-hmm. they can use that for their groceries or whatever yes. um, or their shop runs. And then I've also got, we call them cooler bags here. Yeah. So they're like an insulated um, grocery bag. Yes. And so, yeah, so I've got photos by now on those. So I give my clients their stuff in, depending on what they spend, in those kind of bags. So such a great idea. I thought about it for a second to do the reusable bag, but they over here, they're so expensive. I mean, I should say it was like a year ago when I looked into it, it as like the canvas style bag, but now they're coming out with like the thicker plastic reusable, but it's like, it's not like stretchy plastic, if that makes sense. It's like a woven yes. plastic. Yes. So I might yeah. do that because you're so right. Like you have to use it everywhere you go and people need yeah. to see you seven to 10, if not more times to be like, oh, I need to go look at that service or I need my photographer. Yeah. That's who so I'm going if you've to. Got, if you've literally got stuff that they're, they're picking up and drinking out of their you know, yeah. like coffee cups. Coffee cups were huge in the 90s. Like the 90s and the early 2000s, coffee cups over here were huge. Yeah. So that's my next thing. So anyone in Australia who's listening, piss off, it's my idea. Um, <laughs> I'm in the process of finding, um, so a solicitor, I think it was here, or maybe a surveyor. I photographed an event and I'm like, that is a good coffee cup. She's like, do you want one? I'm like, yes. I love coffee cups. Oh like, love gosh. them. Yeah. But it was like, it was almost like a soup bowl. Like, it was like a big coffee cup. Like, it was a nice, good size coffee, get you going in the morning, get you through the day kind of coffee size. Yeah. But still would fit in the dishwasher, would still fit in the drawer. So, you know, ticking all the things. So that's my next thing is to get people coffee cups and, um, yeah, that put my so name smart. on them. Um, we've got one because my husband's company does a lot of trucking stuff and worth are one of our suppliers. They've got a coffee cup, which is my other favourite coffee cup in the morning because it's like it's sort of like a mini Stanley, like it is set in and then it goes out at the top, but it's just yeah. a China coffee cup. Yeah. So it's easy to measure how much coffee and everything I need to put in to make oh. the perfect cup, cup, you know. But oh. when you drink it, it's got a smiley face on the bottom and like, Every time I use it, everyone's like, oh, my God, that cup's so cool. So, you know, if you put something on the bottom, like, yeah, lots of different fun things. That is such a great idea. Oh, my gosh. People are going to get so much value from this podcast. I can't. It's going (laughs) to – this is going to be amazing. (laughs) So, yeah, so when you are thinking marketing, like an ad in a newspaper, I don't know what they're like in America, but over here they're ridiculous. They are are. stupid and it's – it's one ad, it's like 500 bucks, it's one day and it's in the rubbish. Like right. no one sees that. You are better off buying 500 bucks that gets you in Australian, you get more in America, um, that gets you like 15 umbrellas. You know, that's mm-hmm. way more better value because that's now 15 people scattering across the country. Yeah. And you know, sharing your message. So yeah. yeah. You know, what's so funny too. I am the only person, at least I know in New Jersey and Philadelphia that has a car logo, which is that popular oh. in Australia? Cause huge, I know. Huge. Yeah, it is. So yeah, yeah. no one does it here, but I get messages all the time from like, even just friends or clients or like now my kids go to a private school here how many people booked me from the private school is astronomical. It's amazing. Because they see like, your information they and they're seeing you every single day. Yep. Um, and another that's thing every is- day, that's five days a week. So they're like, or yeah. actually that's technically 10 times a week because morning and drop afternoon off. drop off. Yes. Yeah. So, yes. so you're getting is, your touches in. 
It is so smart. I mean, it cost me maybe 1700 bucks to put on my car and my car is oh, older. It's a lot, but in the return on investment on that. Oh no, I thought that was pretty good. I thought that was oh, pretty I good. I you said like, that was a lot. <laughs> no, 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 no. I was like, that's all right. I'm um, sorry. Accent. Oh, um, yeah. Accent. <laughs> lost in translation. Um, <laughs> Oh my God. Yeah. yeah. No, I was waiting for it to be like five or six grand. When I got that, yeah. pump, I was like, done. I'll be there tomorrow. Like, like go. Right. I was like, let's schedule. Like, and they helped with the design. So I sent them a picture of somebody that posted it in the Facebook group. And I was like, I yeah. like this, but I want different colors and I want more pictures and yada, yada, yada. And they designed the whole thing. It was so. Yeah. Cause easy. like, I did, um, I've got to do it on my, like, I say my new work car. I've had this car for like probably five years. Yeah, it'd be five years. New work car. Um, <laughs> but I just had the one-way vision sticker on the back and yes. I used to get so many phone calls off of that. Like, you know, it was 500 bucks, but that 500 bucks on my last car was on my car for five years. Right. So, you know, and there are people, I don't know if you realize, I'm a bit of a number plate person. I look at number plates when I'm driving and I literally, when I'm driving my kids, because we're half an hour out of our city, our town mm -hmm. um, where we live. So I'm drive half an hour every, every afternoon for activity and half an hour mm -hmm. home. So literally I'm driving along and I'm like, oh, look, there's, you know, there's the the dog number plate, the one, two, three dog number plate because our number plates and some are personalized. And I'm like, oh, look, there's, you know, um, Jeff, and you know, you see the same number plates. So mm -hmm. those people obviously seeing my car. Yeah. If I'm seeing them, they're seeing me. So yeah. you know, um, you're getting more hits. So I definitely and like you know, crickets over here. The the cutout vinyl cutout machines. Yes, are absolutely massive. Even get uh, surely people know someone who's got one. Like I've got two. Like because <laughs> I'm a lot. <laughs> <laughs> But I have just literally on um, this car, because I haven't had the chance to, I'm so indecisive, you see my squirrel brain going, like I'm literally like thinking of ideas while I'm talking to you going, I need to do that later. Oh, I need to do that later. Oh, yep. Um, yeah. So I've just cut some really basic, just photos by now and my phone number um, and just stuck them on with, you know, vinyl for now. And, yeah. you know, for now, it could be three years time, it's still there. Yeah. But it's something like it's um, something our mentor says, it's not pretty, but it's done. Absolutely. You know, you've make it done you make something. It. <laughs> make it till you make exactly, it again. Exactly. Huh? Supporting other people in business supports you. 100%. So, you know, together we grow. A rising tide lifts all ships. Oh, so, I love yeah. that. Oh, my gosh. I, I totally agree with, like, community over competition, Having business oh, partners that are like the same type of ideal clientele, your client avatar, like helping each yeah. other and sharing stories and sharing social media and sharing in your newsletters too. Like it's only going to bring business to everybody and especially small yes. businesses as well. Yes. And tagging, like mm. tagging people. So like today I'm wearing some earrings that I got from a um, lunch and I went to. So I just took a quick story photo of my earrings going love these earrings from this company and I got them at this event. You're reaching more people. You are supporting more people. You're, I'm supporting those two businesses, but those two businesses are in turn supporting me. So, oh you know, we we all work together. Like, I mean, if they, I had a photographer here who I was very close with and we had a little bit of a falling out, but now I look back on it because she did something that I didn't agree with. But, again, step back remove the emotion yeah and I'm like she made me a better business person doing that to me because now I cross my eyes I dot my t's I make it made my business stronger yeah and we're becoming good again um and again I now know don't show all your cards <laughs> that's great you, you say know. that that's great. Yeah, like, and definitely work together but don't tell everyone everything like you do need to keep some stuff to yourself because you know, anyone listening to this podcast, I'm sure you are now on your phones. If you're listening on your phone, you've got it and you're Googling supplies for umbrellas or reusable mm -hmm. knives and forks. Like I'm sure they're all doing that. So, you know, I'm happy to share that with you guys because I've already done it and right. I'm on to the next thing. I haven't told you what my next, well, I told you about the coffee cups, but there's a bit more on top of that. So, <laughs> you know, it's, it's the next thing. Um, right. Something that's 
really huge here too, actually, marketing wise. I don't know if you do you guys do you know what a stubby cooler is? No. A debit okay, it so, sounded like you said debit card, but I don't think that's right. No, 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 sorry. Stubby cooler. So stubby as in a drink, as in like a beer and a cooler. So it goes on, you put your oh, drink in yes. this. So that's called a koozie here. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> so we call them stubby coolers. Oh, so like a little koozie for their drinks. Yeah, yeah. So um, they're like, and you just put your beer or your wine or your whatever, your bottle of whatever in this, in the cooler yeah. um, and put your advertising on the outside. They are super popular here. People love those. Really? Um, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. Super, that's a great idea for like, you give mom the Stanley and you give dad the koozie cooler. and then they yeah. both get the umbrella to keep in the car. <laughs> yeah. There you go. So oh you got his gosh. and hers. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that is such great. Guys, if you are not taking down notes, like she said, <laughs> do your Google as you're listening and you are going to increase your marketing and increase your business so much just by listening to this podcast. I told you, she's gonna, she's amazing. She's giving you all of her tips and tricks, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> well, 50%, 20, 20 years, over 20 years, like, you know, there's lots that you, you, yeah. you come up with. But this is so much value because, and I also love that you're from a different country because you obviously have different things that you are doing there that works yeah. for you that we don't do here and could definitely work for us here too. So, yeah. and I feel like you guys are like years ahead of us too. Like everything hits you that guys first. I know it hits you first before it hits us. <laughs> well, I suppose we're a day ahead, you know, like. Just so, just so you know, tomorrow is fabulous. It's a beautiful day. The sun rose. Everything's <laughs> going to be okay tomorrow. Go to bed, sleep well. Wonderful. The world is not <laughs> ending tomorrow. <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh. This has been amazing. Let me get back. I'm going to go to my ending questions here. Cause I want to start with all of my guests having like three ending questions that would really enhance anybody's business or help them motherhood wise as well. So okay, yeah. what advice do you have for scaling a photography business without sacrificing quality or personal connection with your clients? Boundaries. Oh, I boundaries. Love that. So many boundaries. Like, and I have learned this. Like, I was that person replying to the crazy person at midnight about the color of the socks that we're gonna put on their baby the next day. Like <laughs> boundaries. You know, set them and it's okay if you cross them occasionally, but try and stay in them. Um, and show up on your socials professionally and personally. The yeah. human nature is nosy. Mm. They like to know. They want to feel like I have people stop me in the street and they're like, oh, my God, how's your daughter going at dance? And I'm like, yeah, really good. Walk away going, who the hell are you? Like, <laughs> You know, I know, I know that's scary, but you need to show up. You know, you don't have to use your kids' names. You don't have to show photos of your kids, but right. just let them know you go, oh, you know, put a quick photo of your steering wheel and be like on the dance run again, or yes. just give people that connection that you have a life. <laughs> it's so true. It's not social media is to be social. I've said this for years as well. Instagram used to be the portfolio. Yeah. Post crazy world, crazy shutdown. Um, it is now personal. You yes. talk personal. And again, you don't have to share your kids. You don't need to share names. You don't need to do all that. But sharing that you're a mother, especially because most of our clients are mothers or soon to be mothers, yes. have families. They want to get to know, like, and trust you before they even inquire or before they even come in. I have so many yes. clients that will say, I found you on Google. I went to your Instagram. I feel like I already know you. And when they come into the session, we just have a regular conversation back and forth. And it's not awkward ever. So ever. one of a client that I just um, had come found me on Google. Now to find me on Google, you're doing pretty well because I do not write well on Google. That is something I'm very poor at in my business and I am working on, but Google's hard. Um, <laughs> it's a lot. Google's a lot. It is. But it's definitely, yes. that's where I get most of my new clients, but we do a yes. lot of work on our Google. Yes. Yes. And I'm constant, I'm constantly working on it, but 
people are better at it than me. And I'm, you know, and I am, and admit when you don't know something, like you can't know everything. Um, and, but I had this client come in and I said, I had you, so I found you on Google. I went to your website and if our mentor is listening, he will absolutely love this because he told me to do it for so long and I hadn't, and I finally did it. And people actually watch it. It's a welcome video. Now, if you go and if you go on my website and you look at my, my, Welcome video. I look like an absolute nutter. It's because I am. Um, <laughs> it's 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 who I am. Like it's I mean so to say, I, yes, yeah. I just and I literally did it. Um, I had a client pull out. I had my makeup artist book. I went frigate, do my hair and makeup. Come anyway. I booked the time out. Did my hair and makeup. Set up my phone and I literally just actually no. I think I did it on my actual camera. I just set it up on a tripod and I literally was like, so, hey, blah, 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 blah. Then I jumped out. Then I came back and I'm like, and then I'd do another thing and then I'd like tried walking in and anyone who was watching from outside my studio would have been like, she needs a straight jacket. She is crazy. But just have fun with it and do, like I have got like 40 little videos and I've only used one. Um, yeah. But that one video is creating so much more work for me um you were right um <laughs> no it's so true it's something yeah. I have to do too it's been on my list too but I feel like it's definitely a pretty not it's 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 done it's not done. perfect yeah. yeah and yeah doing it and getting it done is better than not doing it at all exactly it's, exactly it's, just get something there it doesn't it's yeah. done it's not perfect but it's done Yes. yes. And I, like, I do that. have full intentions of going and doing another one and actually having a script and doing a whole lot better job than I did. But, <laughs> but I think at the same time, because it is so off the cuff, it is me and that's who I am and that's what I'm like. So, yeah. Oh, I love that. I love that. And that's one thing that I feel like with social media too. There's so many people out there that it's like curated and it's cute and they have their oh, makeup done yeah. all the time. But that is not my client. Oh, no, this is me. I don't have eyebrows. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I've got terrible regrowth. I, I'm a photographer because I rock up looking like this and have you glamorous. It's about right. you. It's not about me. <laughs> yeah. That's that's great, too. It's not about me. It's about you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Looking back on your journey, what do you consider to be the key factors in your success? Oh. Never say die. Never, never give up. Um, definitely never give up. Um, I have copped some whopping blows. Um, back when, so back when dinosaurs were in the earth, um, <laughs> back when I first started, um, websites were hard. Like you could not just bang up your own website. That, that was unheard of. You needed software you needed in like people to help you um all this kind of stuff so the first time I got a website built I had to buy three thousand dollars worth of um software because back then you had to buy your software um mm -hmm. so this that was Adobe Creative Suite that business. was the first time they brought Zendesk out Creative the Suite so modern, three and a half thousand Australian newsletter system um, for photography yeah. Use it was a lot. Link below for a free trial and 50% off your and first year. And so this guy designed my website and he's like, so you need this so you can go in and you can work on your website and all this kind of stuff. I'm like, okay, cool. So he sets up my website. He did it wrong. Um, I went and photographed an event with 800 teenage kids. Oh, gosh. I gave them this link that he hadn't set up correctly. So he hadn't purchased the domain correctly or something. I don't know what he did. He just didn't do something correctly. And so I've uploaded all these photos and all these kids are hitting this website. So like, you know, massive amounts of people hitting this website. And they, um, because he hadn't done his thing right, a, another company had taken over my website. Oh, no. It wasn't just any old company. It was a porn site. No. Yeah. And I had Catholic school kids at this thing public school kids, and kids, they were all under 18, like. <laughs> oh, God. Oh. So it was terrible. So I then had to change my um, website to Null Photographic or something like that. Like it was terrible. Like it didn't even, 
it wasn't my way, like it wasn't right, anything like that. So um, and then I met another IT guy, paid another stupid amount of money for a website and it wasn't bad but trying to update it. And he was like, this is where I'm at. I'm like, oh, my God, I love it so far. I can't wait to see what you did, what you do with it. And he made it live just as it was. And I was like, oh, wait a minute. Didn't you say you're doing this, 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 and this? He goes, yeah, but you said you loved it. I said, no, I said, I loved it. Can't wait to see it finished. Right. Oh, gosh. And he was like, oh, no, she loves it. We're done. Oh, no. So then, yeah, so, like, I have had, I've had a pretty rough time. So, but now you can do your own website. Like, so, you know, that was probably 15 years of treachery. Wow, yeah. Oh, because you couldn't do it yourself. Like, you know. Yeah. So just think what's hard now probably won't be hard tomorrow. Yeah. And like if something goes wrong, so this is something my mum said to me once, if something goes wrong, will it matter in five minutes? Will it matter in five days? Will it matter in five years? Yeah. And if it's yes to all of those things, then okay, it's serious. We need to do something about it. Right. If it's no to at least one of those, let it go. Don't mm. waste your energy on it. Fix it, obviously, but don't keep stressing about it. Like fix what you can let the rest go. Oh, that's so good. Oh my gosh. I can't. Im- oh my gosh. I remember MySpace. Do you remember MySpace where you had yeah, to like I am that? Old. that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm that old See, too, but that was me in like middle school where like you're searching the internet for like different codes of different, like your friends' pictures and stuff. <laughs> So I can't imagine even trying to do a website back then. So yeah, oh, yes, it websites are so easy now. If you don't have a website, oh my gosh, get a website. Just get something. Oh my gosh. Yeah, you if you don't have, and if you and if you don't have a website and your email is still I take photos at Gmail, Hotmail, Yahoo, any of those things, update that. Get yourself a domain name. You need I'm to guilty. be I take photos at whoever I am dot com. If you're in Australia.com.au, like. I know. Yeah. I'm so good. I only just bought um, like info at stinsmanphotography.com like a month ago it, because they did the whole privacy thing now where if you have like Gmail or Yahoo and it's a business, like it could go to just straight to spam or promotions. So I had to buy it finally and it still routes to my Yahoo account so I can see everything, but it's, it's, it's. <laughs> It was coming. It's so much more professional. Oh my God. I'm glad you've it done is, it. I but know. Geez. I, know. I know. I'm so guilty of it. So guilty. And yeah. what advice do you have for aspiring photographers or new business owners? Do a business course. <laughs> yes. Yes. Do a business course. Understand cost of goods understand cost of goods, cost of doing business, have a good accountant. Like you need someone who who knows all the tax laws because America is like crazy with their tax laws. Like I thought ours were hard, but no, yours is insane. Um, (laughs) Like we've had a conversation about things you can claim and things you can't. And I was just like, what? Okay, cool. Um, Have a good accountant, work out your cost of business, cost of goods, um and do a business course if you you know just do always learn yes listen to podcasts obviously you do because you're listening to this one but read books um feed your mind feed your mind instead of and like I I mean to say I am do as I say not as I do saying this instead of binging tv shows read books that improve your life instead of watching tiktok read read books listen to podcasts like yeah, I've recently just started listening to podcasts when I'm driving without the kids in the car. Mm-hmm. So just to make better use of my time. And it's funny because I have, and audiobooks, I love audiobooks too. Um, but I have become this person. Now I used to not mind when people would ring me when I was driving. Now I'm like, piss off. It was getting to a good part. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to answer you. Um, but yeah, so definitely feed your mind. Oh. And you, you speak to yourself. Your voice is the one your your brain hears the most out of anyone's voice. So be kind in what you say. You're amazing. I could not end a podcast any better than the way you just did. That was 
So good. Thank you so much. Tell all our listeners where they can find you on Instagram, your website. Tell us all. Yeah. Okay. So Instagram, Facebook, I'm Photos by Nell. Um, N for November, not M. So, (laughs) um, and then my website is all the W's, photosbynell.com.au because I'm an Aussie. Thank you so, so much for being here. Everyone is going to love this podcast. Go and follow her and I will talk to you soon.